over time. Sponsored by Wendy's. They got you for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and everything in between. High school sports, we've got it covered. Overtime starts now. Hello and welcome to Overtime. I'm Scott Lubber. And I'm David Greenberg. Our mission is to keep school spirit alive and well during a scaled back fall sports season and at a time when many students will be taking online classes. We have another fun show in store for you. We'll feature the golfing Greenberg sisters from Boylan, Ella and Eva. We'll get to know Byron golfer Mason Brandt and we'll check out some of your school spirit photos. In our Glory Day segment, we'll look back at South Beloit's 2002 state championship football team and chat with their quarterback of that winning team, Jared Shipley. And we have week two of our Battle of the Stadiums contest. Let's get you started with one of the biggest pieces of news from this week from the IHSA. Coaches and athletes in the fall sports that are competing will have a chance to compete in postseason action. The IHSA announced there will be regional competitions held in golf, cross country, girls swimming and girls tennis. Those regionals will take place the third week of October. After that, the fall seasons will likely end because it looks like state tournaments won't be happening. Boylan Boys golf coach John Canova says it makes sense to hold regional tournaments. Obviously, one of these sports where the guys can be socially distanced. They're only playing with their own equipment. They're not touching anybody else's. So I'm very glad that they're doing it um, for the kids. I mean, it's, you know, to, to not give them that opportunity it wouldn't be fair for them. Yeah, it's too bad there won't be any state tournaments, though. Yeah, that's a tough blow. Many local athletes could have challenged for all state uh, for all state honors. The golf season is going strong, though. There was a big event last Saturday at Prairie View Golf Course in Byron, the Tiger Invitational. There were five teams from the area that competed in that event. The Byron Tigers were led by standout freshman Mason Brandt. Here he is on the green, showing off his putting skills. Despite a good lag here, he had three tough three putts that hurt his day a little bit. However, he still f uh, managed to finish with an impressive 82. Brandt was paired up with Stillman Valley's number one senior, Tim Markham. He'd make his way to the green and he'd tap this one in right here for par at the second. Markham finished the day with an 86. His partner was Stillman sophomore Griffin Smith. Smith struggled a bit through the front nine, but was absolutely lights out on the back. Take a look at this chip here. Very tough up and down, but he makes it look easy, placing this one a foot and a half from the hole. He'd finish that one out for par. This was his tee shot at the par 3 13th, and it was a beauty. He dropped it to less than six feet and buried the birdie try. Smiths finished the back nine with an even 36 and led the way for the Cardinals with a round of 80, good for second in the tournament. But here was the best golfer of the day. Colin Ellsbury from Rockford Christian led all golfers with a score of 79, largely in part to his putter. He actually mentioned to me the following day he was supposed to have putting lessons, if you can imagine that. Not much to fix in his stroke here. Check out this next one. Gets that one close to the pin, but check out this next one. Hard right turn and downhill, but it doesn't matter. He buries it anyways. An impressive day for the senior. He'd help Rockford Christian secure first place in the tournament. After his round, he said he's trying to lead by example in his final year. Basically try to lead by just like letting the guys know that we have someone right behind them if they have a bad day. We're all going to have bad days sooner or later, and it just depends that one guy needs to step up after that. I feel like we can go pretty far. We've in the past had little struggles but I feel like with this team we're all a solid group of guys like if one goes down the other one's picking someone right back up. So Rockford Christian took the team championship with a score of 328. Stillman Valley had an excellent day and finished second only five strokes behind the Royal Lions. Byron took third followed by Oregon and Forreston. For girls golf action we go to Timber Point. This was on Tuesday. Rockford Coop took on Belvedere Coop. Belvedere's number one Co Walberg put together a solid round thanks to knocking down putts like these. She finished with a 42. Rockford's Anna Doherty had a really nice day around the green. Check out this one from distance for Birdie. She finished with a score of 41. Kayla Sialin seems to be following right in her older sister's footsteps. She was the one to beat shooting just one over on the front nine. She ended the afternoon with a very impressive 37. Rockford Coop won the match 182-193. Despite the loss, Belvedere's head coach says she has some high hopes for this season. We have plenty of girls on the team this year. We actually have 23, and um, the best part is our team's really deep as far as um, the girls coming out and actually showing up to play every match and whatnot. So um, I would say we're, if we can stay consistent, we'll be pretty strong, I think, the rest of the season. A Nick 10 girls tennis teams held their first competitions this week. This is from Monday when Guilford hosted DeKalb at the Guilford Tennis Center. Now spectators, they had their protective mask on and they did a good job keeping their distance. 
We're going to pick it up here with Guilford's number one singles player, Casey Alcutt. She won her match over Kariah Foster's six love, six love. Alcutt is a two-time state qualifier. Next up, it's the number one doubles team for the Vikings of Maggie Thomas and Sarah Dennis. They won their match 6-2, 6-4. Six six Guilford defeated DeKalb 5-0. It was a promising start for a very young Guilford team. We have just two returning varsity players. Um, however, we won fresh off conference last year. We have a lot of underclassmen that are, are coming in very talented, so we should have a, a pretty good season. Well, if you plan on attending any of the fall sports events that are going on, there are safety guidelines that you'll need to follow. Yeah, this week the Nick 10 released a reminder of the IHSA's guidelines for return to play. Spectators should social distance at all times. You're encouraged to bring your own lawn chairs for some of the outdoor events. Spectators might be assigned specific viewing areas to watch from, and you must wear a face covering at all times. Spectators are allowed at the outdoor sports, but they are not allowed at swimming events, which are indoors. And that brings us to our question of the week. Do you believe spectators should be allowed to attend high school sporting events this fall? Cast your eyes, or rather your yes or no answer on any tech device. You can do that by going to mystateline.com slash interact. That's mystateline.com slash interact. We'll update you later in the show on how you're answering. Coming up next, we'll check out some of your school spirit photos. Plus, there are two sisters who can't be kept away from the golf course. They're the Greenbergs from Boylan. And later, we relive South Beloit's 2002 state championship football season with a quarterback from that team, Jared Shipley. You're watching Overtime. 